Welcome to the MH2801 video segment on the direct delta function being the limit of a family of functions. Frequently in textbooks on mathematical methods used in physics and engineering, you will find the direct delta function delta of x minus a being written as a case uh, a uh, piece a case piecewise function where its va function value is infinity if x is equals to a and zero otherwise or more frequently in engineering mathematics textbook uh, the what is shown in the graph is a an arrow uh, at a at x equals to a uh, with a arrow where the arrowhead ends at the value equals to one. So for some engineering students will tell uh, physics students that they think that the direct delta function has actually value equals to 1 here when actually the 1 indicates the strength of the direct delta function, not the function value. And sometimes you see textbooks putting an infinity down here, but this is not very meaningful because first of all, infinity is not a number, so you cannot assign a function value equals to infinity. And then secondly, Assigning the function value at one point being equal to infinity is not very meaningful. So there are two important ways that we will learn to uh, deal with the direct delta function. One way is to see it as the limit of a family of parametrized functions. And the second way is to learn to see it as a distribution. So we will, we'll, in this video segment, we will talk about the first which is the direct delta function as the limit of a family of functions. So one, uh, let's start with a simple example. Uh, a, let's start with a simple example of a family of rectangle, re rectangular functions. Let's say this is axis is x, and this axis is f of x. And let's consider the rectangular function uh, centered around a, so such that Okay, such that the width of the rectangular function is equals to, uh, let's say that is equals to uh, sigma, and the height of the rectangular function is equals to one over sigma, so that the area is equals to one sigma times one over sigma, which is always one. So it's always one, and you can have a a skinny a rectangle function like this or a fat rectangle function that looks like this okay where the width is another value another value of sigma a larger value of sigma and therefore the height would reduce correspondingly now uh, the direct delta function in this picture then would then be delta x minus a is equals to the limit as sigma goes to zero of the rectangular function p sigma of x where p sigma of x p sigma of x is equals to uh, 1 over sigma if x is between a minus sigma over 2 and a plus sigma over 2 and then it is equal to 0 otherwise Okay, so this is how the direct delta function can be defined in terms of the limits of this family of rectangular functions uh, characterized by a single parameter sigma. Uh, and the limit is as sigma tends to zero, the rectangular function will become very, very uh, tall, but very, very skinny, but the area remains equals to one. So what we do know from this definition is that the integral of the direct delta function, delta x minus a, dx, if we integrate from minus infinity to infinity, this should be the same as the integral from minus infinity to infinity of the limit as sigma goes to zero of p sigma x dx. Now, since uh, the limit of a... Uh, so, uh, if... We are allowed, so uh, I will explain later when we are allowed to do this. If we are allowed to interchange the limit and the 
uh, integral, so limit of sigma going to zero, and integral from minus infinity to infinity of p sigma x dx, then this will be the same as li limit of sigma goes to zero of one, because the integral of all members of the uh, rectangular family of functions uh, is equals to 1 and therefore this limit is 1 which is what we expect of the direct delta function that it is normalized. Now what other property does the direct delta function have? The other important property that the direct delta function have is localization. So we have already seen that a direct delta function is normalized so the, that means that the integral from minus infinity to infinity delta x minus a dx is equals to 1 so this is norm, normalization now the other uh, important as uh, property of the direct delta function is that it is localized now what that means is that if we integrate from minus infinity to infinity a product of a arbitrary function f of x times delta x minus a dx, this must be equals to f of a. Now how do we see this? Uh, and this, this is of course f at the value a, which is being localized by the direct delta function. Now how do we see that this is the case? So what we can do is we can draw a sketch. Okay, it's an ugly sketch, but you will bear with me. So here is x equals to a. This is the y-axis. Now let's draw the direct delta function. Well, I mean not the direct delta function, but a uh, one of the rectangle functions whose width is equal to sigma and whose height is equal to 1 over sigma. And at the same time, let us sketch in the function f of x that varies more slowly with x. So at this point here, at this point here, Okay, the function value is f of a. Now, the rectangle function has a value of 1 uh, between okay, a minus sigma over 2 to a plus sigma over 2 and then 0 outside. So the integral, the integral from minus infinity to infinity of fx times p sigma of x dx will be equals to an integral from a minus sigma over 2 to a plus sigma over 2 fx times 1 times dx. Now in the limit, in the limit of sigma going to 0, we see that of course um, this, this integral, this particular integral, integral from a minus sigma over 2 to a plus sigma over 2 would be uh, of fx dx will be approximately will be approximately uh, sigma times f at a okay so this is the definition of the uh, sorry so here we should have a 1 over sigma because that's the value of uh, that's the value of uh, p sigma x between uh, a minus sigma over two and a plus sigma over two. So here, let me put that in one over sigma. So there is a one over sigma. So indeed, okay, the integral of uh, the product f x delta x minus a in the limit of sigma goes to zero is indeed equals to f a. So this is the normalization property for the direct delta function. Okay. Now, um, alternatively, you don't have to uh, stick to the rectangle function. There are many different families of functions uh, whose limit becomes the direct delta function. For example, a family, a family of Gaussians. So a family of Gaussians, f of x sigma equals to 1 over square root 2 pi sigma squared, okay, uh, e to the minus x minus a square divided by 2 sigma square becomes the direct delta function uh, delta x minus a as sigma approaches 0. So this is these are all Gaussians. So if I sketch them, if I sketch them, 
as a function of x and this is a, then I will have, let's say, one Gaussian that looks like this. Okay, this is a uh, flat Gaussian, but okay, oh, this is for sigma that is fairly large. Okay, but I also can have a very skinny Gaussian that looks like this. Okay, so this is for, uh, so the, let me annotate them properly. So this is for sigma, fairly large. And the, uh, the skinny Gaussian would be for sigma, small. So in the limit of sigma goes to zero, uh, the family of Gaussians become the, the normalized Gaussians become the direct delta function. So we can, don't have to stick to this. Uh, we can also have, we can also have uh, f x uh, f x uh, f x um, a equals to uh, sine uh, two pi x divided by a divided by two pi x over a. These are the sinc functions, sinc uh, 2 pi x over a, and if we graph them, then they look something like this. Here's an a. Uh, if we have a fatter, if a fatter uh, sinc function, then it looks like this. So it oscillates and eventually becomes zero. Uh, and whereas if we have a skinnier uh, sinc function, then we will have something that looks like this. Okay, again it oscillates uh, between positive and negative values. So this is for a small and the other is for a large. So all these families of functions can become the, so this one becomes the direct delta function uh, when uh, a goes to zero. So all these functions, family of functions, can go to become the uh, can become the direct delta function. Now there's one thing that we need to point out, and that is first thing, uh, first thing. The, the, so two points to to note. Two points to note. First of all, this this. Uh, This uh, is, generally speaking, not true. So you cannot actually interchange the limit, the, the, the order of the, taking the limit as sigma goes to zero and uh, the integral of uh, P sigma of X. And the reason for that is because this is itself a limit. The integral is itself a limit and limits normally do not commute. So limits normally do not commute. So the order is important, and we have seen a lot of this order-dependent uh, limit taking in thermal physics, where if you take limits one way, you get a, a clear-cut definition of temperature, whereas if you take limit another way, then temperature cannot be defined. So that's uh, one point to note. The second point to note is actually that uh, the limit of a family of functions okay, need not be a function itself. Need not be a function. In fact, very frequently, it is a distribution. A distribution is sort of like a function, except that it is not required uh, it is not required to obey uh, the kind of restrictions that a function must obey. Uh, and of course, you have encountered distributions in the form of probability distributions. Uh, but here, this is just a generalized uh, mathematical name for uh, a type of mathematical object that is not quite yet a function, but can be the limit of a family of functions or can even be solutions to partial differential equations.